Welcome to the Zelda Informer podcast. I'm your host, Alfred Tabax, joined again by the beautiful and lovely Mrs. Nathaniel Rumpeljance. Mrs. <laughs> For two, two wrong corrections. That, like, <laughs> I'm not female and I'm not married. So. <laughs> Oh boy! Yeah, you've done it to me. Yes, before, stuff like that. Yes, I'm I'm back after a one week hiatus. Wasn't feeling too good last week. Still not 100. percent Yep. But neither am I, which is why sadly this week we're pushing that habanero pepper thing to next week. Barring any, oh. hopefully there's nothing else that's gonna happen. But my throat's killing me. Just so you know, he canceled it. I was still willing to do it. <laughs> I was willing to puke my guts out on camera for you guys. But yeah. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do it next week. This week's not wouldn't be that fun for two sick guys to try to eat habanero peppers. <laughs> uh, that being said, we don't have a lot of news, like like last week or the week before, but we've got some stuff to talk about. So we'll just jump right into that. Um, Emily Rogers released a tweet, or she tweeted out some stuff. Um, one of the most, I guess, the the crux of this, her tweets have been that um, Breath of the Wild isn't going to be a launch game and we can get uh-huh. that from the fact that she said at one point she said it's a very ambitious game maybe even too much um and that there have been localization um problems with the game um and because of that because of it being too ambitious um and they haven't even begun quality testing and quality testing for a game this big um would probably take from four to six months before it can be declared publicly ready for um you know, release and consumption from from uh, gamers, so that basically means that the game won't be ready till either you know anywhere between March and June. So we're looking at like a summer release or late, late, late spring release. Um, so that's kind of not the news we wanted to hear because this was a big selling point <laughs> for the Switch. Um, we know that it's going to run better on the Switch. We know that this game is. Highly anticipated by everyone, and this was one of the bigger reasons for people to buy a Switch at launch, was to have Breath of the Wild at launch. Sadly, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. Keep in mind, that these are just rumors, though. Um, we're not 100% sure on this, but we're not 100% sure that this is not not true. Um, yeah. So, Nate, what do you, it's, what it's, do you think? Well, well, it's funny hearing you bring this topic up, because I could totally tell you were reading part of my news post, because yeah, you were using my words. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, my own words are being said that to be me. accurate, um, and we'll link to that accurate. later too. You can read the whole yeah. Thing. So yeah, so I'm the one that, that put the report up on the site. I'm, I think I'm actually the one that spotted it first at the <clears> site, <throat> um, just because I do follow Emily Rogers and Laura Kate Dale and all of those r- various rumor people who were spot on about the Nintendo Switch, um, just because I personally want to hear about this kind of stuff. Uh, now. I've seen some reactions to this news that, oh, it's delayed, this is terrible. It hasn't actually been delayed because it's only announced for next year. Yeah. Um, people just presumed that meant launch with the Switch, but Nintendo has never said it was going to launch with the Switch. They've never even hinted it's going to launch with the Switch. All they have said is that it's going to release simultaneously on the Switch and the Wii U. So, for all we know, Nintendo had never really planned for it to be a launch game in the first place. <clears throat> Uh, and because they didn't unveil the Switch yet this past E3, it still made sense for Breath of the Wild to take center stage because they had already announced that game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am I, I am a little disappointed if this ends up being true. Now, she does note that she's even calling this it's herself a rumor. Uh, like, she's not even 100% sure of it. Uh, if you actually read her words carefully, her sources are not saying that it's not going to release in March. But based on logical deduction of the, when the translating will all be done, it, it sounds like there's no way in heck it would be ready for March. So it's, it still could be ready to go for the Switch on day one. But it's looking, if this is true, keep in mind, this is also the person that said that there was going to be gender options in the game. And that ended up not being true. So like a heavy grain of salt with anything that comes from Emily Rogers because she's I'd say maybe 50-50 with her rumors. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, to, to me, that's not even the, really what I want to talk about. Because that's, that's disappointing if it's not going to be there at launch. It's their high, most highly anticipated game. It's been mm-hmm. dominating the conversation this year. Um, it's probably going to get a mention at the Game Awards as like one of the most looked forward to games for next year. Do you, speaking of the Game Awards, real quick, do you think we're going to see any more uh, 
footage from it at the Game Awards, considering how liberal they've been. I thought, you know, part of me wants to say no, because they had that event on January 12th. Yeah. But then part of me also says that it, it's kind of a good time for, if they want to keep hyping the game, they could literally show what we would know 100% for certain is Switch footage at the event, like a new trailer. Yeah. Um, just to keep driving that, that Switch name and, that, uh, and all that hype uh, for the game, which obviously makes a lot more sense if it's going to be a launch game. But either way, um, I would like to see them do that uh, because without that, Nintendo really has nothing to talk about <laughs> at the Game Awards, and they're always a big part of the Game Awards. At least yeah. they have been so far. So well, Zelda Reggie, feel- one of the investors of the Game Awards. Yeah, one he's actually he's on the board. Yeah, he's yeah. on he's on the board who helps make all the decisions and stuff. So um, I feel like if they're going to show anything, it has to be Zelda because I, I don't think they actually want to show any other Switch games until the twelfth. Um, but again, we you know I, I I don't know. But getting back to this this rumor stuff, um, I don't even really care. I guess if it comes out at launch, it's disappointing if it doesn't. But as long as it comes next year, and the more. I keep thinking it's not going to come at launch. The more I keep thinking it's coming holiday 2017 because they do need a big title for holidays. And this would be a pretty big title Um, is the part of the rumor you didn't bring up was the demo, the demo. Yeah. Okay. So she noted, um, she said she's only heard whispers, which whatever that means, she's (laughs) almost like Jeff Keighley in this way, driving hype over something that she barely knows anything about. Um, no man's sky. Huh? <laughs> Anyways, so so essentially, she's claiming that the E3 demo was kind of a dumbed down version of the game, and the in terms of difficulty, because they wanted press and media such as myself to focus more on exploring the world rather than worrying about you know complicated puzzles or hard hard to defeat enemies which there's still were some hard to defeat enemies but in general walking around killing those bokoblins is not really that difficult and bokoblins have never been that difficult to kill anyways um so nothing felt out of place when i played it but the idea that that might have been slightly dumbed down and is going to be even more difficult in the final game that that excites me Mm-hmm. Um, that that to me is also a sign that they recognize that the games have been getting too easy. Because that, that's always the one criticism I worried about with this game. For all the exploration, all the big bosses, and all this stuff out there, is it just going to be too easy? Do you think that they'll implement a difficulty setting on the game? No. Okay. That I mean, <clears throat> let me let me let me take that back a bit. Um, they have been doing that hard mode thing lately. Yeah. Or hero mode. I could see them doing something like that again. Uh, I would like to see them not do it. I would rather, I'd rather have just straight difficulty settings, like easy, Me medium, too. hard. Well, because the um, hard mode really isn't necessarily like enemies are smarter or they come faster. It's just, well, you get three hearts, there's no health, and you don't, you know. And then like double thing. damage or something. Yeah, it's not like, necessarily it doesn't like... Actually, yeah, it doesn't make the game more difficult. It just makes you have the ability to make less mistakes. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, it does make you a better player, but it doesn't actually make the encounters that much harder. And it, it's kind of always been my criticism of these hero modes they put out there or hard modes is it's not really harder. It's just different. Mm-hmm. It just restri- it, it kind of restricts you more. And that's okay, but like people already do those kind of runs, like the three heart runs. Yeah. Um, you know, the swordless runs, like they're, they're really trying to restrict themselves to make the game harder, but that doesn't actually make the enemy AI smarter and difficulty settings in most games makes the AI smarter in addition to hitting you harder. Um, so I would love to see that. I just don't think Nintendo's going to do that. I, I think if they do anything, it's just going to be another hero mode type situation where it's just a lot easier for them to do that way, especially with a game this big. Yeah. Um, but well, again, like, other other games this big, like The Witcher, have difficulty settings. So but this is their first venture into that kind of this big of a game. So I can understand that. I I, I wouldn't like it if that was the only yeah. thing we got. But I mean, like you know, this is this is Nintendo's first foray into something this big. Yeah. Um. So, you know, we 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 don't really know. Sure. But that's that's what's most not logical, but most Nintendo-y <laughs> is the fact that it's just gonna be like a hero mode with. Yeah, you know, less health restoration, which wouldn't make sense though, 
because the idea of this game is like survival too so you have you have to craft health items and cook food um so who knows and, and to be fair i mean i didn't get the sense playing the demo that the game was too easy um it kind of felt almost just right as it were uh especially for a beginning area where you're still learning how to play but there still was some difficulty like the first time the first time a lot of you guys if you haven't watched any videos and already figured it out the first time a bunch of you guys face step talus you're going to die <laughs> it, it, it's going to happen uh it didn't happen to me technically because my demo ran out of time the first time i faced him <laughs> Uh, but I was on my way to dying. I probably would have died the first time because it took me a little bit to figure out all the various mechanics because even though there's an obvious weak point, it's not necessarily obvious how to how to tackle that weak point. And there's so many different ways to do it, which is what really excites me about this game is a lot of the Zelda games in the past have all been, there's just, this is the way you do it. And you just go, go, go. And this is like, no, like here's a weak point, but you have like, use your imagination. Use your environment. You can figure out multiple ways to do it. Um, and so to me, like, the difficulty kind of felt just right. But, again, I'm not going to complain if it's a little harder. That's that's awesome. Um, you know, it's just like, you know, in the E3 demo, we know they stripped out towns and certain NPCs. So it's like, you know, who, who knows what else was different about that version compared to the retail yeah. release. The demo, from what I could tell, from the videos that I saw, seemed like a very dumbed-down version of what we're going to get a release whenever that release date's going to be. Um, and to say dumbed-down is is <laughs> a lot because it didn't look like... Yeah, it didn't look like a complete game right off the bat, but it still looked like it had, an, had more than any other Zelda game in it from the demo in terms of an open world and things to do. and What I thought was crazy about the demo is, and, and I talked about this way back on the Zone 4 podcast when we had the four people in person because we had four people at E3. Um, I, if all they ever did was release that demo area as a game, I would be thrilled. That's how amazing that opening area is. And it really sets the bar super high for the rest of the game. Because this is the beginning area. Mm -hmm. So, like, other areas in the game should be, like, 20 times better than what you get at this start. And I was so impressed with the start, the polish, uh, the variety in enemies, which you just don't expect in the very beginning of a game. Uh, the variety in items, the variety in even, even the little bit of story you get. Like, you know, how it's told and how you're introduced to the environment and how things work. It really felt organic and natural, and it felt huge. That's the big thing I got out of this. That yeah. territory feels huge. It feels bigger than the entirety of Ocarina of Time. That's crazy to me. That little circle on that map, to me, felt bigger than the entirety of Ocarina of Time. It probably I, was. It, it, it probably was in terms of, like, actual landmass. So it's like... Yeah. That's why I'm like, man, if they just release that as a standalone game, you know, not for sixty bucks, but you know, like a thirty dollar game, I would be totally thrilled. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot more. Uh, I'm I, I'm really wanting to get more, and that's why I'm hoping, like you mentioned at the Game Awards, I hope they show more because I want to know more. <clears throat> I, I think there's so much to know in this game that it's impossible for them to spoil too much before release. Maybe we'll see a story trailer. That'd be something new. That would be something new. They usually don't do story trailers. Because there really is never a story to... I, I'd like to see a trailer that shows off just a small bit, like even a five-second clip of a dungeon. Because yep. we haven't even seen a dungeon, you know? Uh, it's just... There's a lot of things I'd like to see, and I think this game is so big. You know, It's kind of like Skyrim in that it doesn't really matter how much they show us pre-release. It's still only the tip of the iceberg. I think the cool thing, too, or is, is how... Dif or not how difficult, but how um, under wraps this game has been, because we haven't we've seen some leaked stuff, but we haven't seen like leaked dungeons, bosses, um, towns, characters. We've only heard stuff from like third parties. Well, and it that's what kind of makes me wonder about with this this rumor about the localization. If the localization is not even done, that would make a lot of sense to me why nothing's getting out. Yeah. Because that means the only people who actually know are all the people in Japan. 
and nothing ever comes out of Japan. It's just the, Nintendo has such a tight grip in Japan. Nothing tends to leak out of Japan. Um, unless it's from like a, a manufacturer. That's why like you'll see like that one that one place, Nikkei or whatever. Mm-hmm. You'll see some reports out of them because they have contacts inside the manufacturers. But it's nothing's out of Nintendo. And this game in Japan would only be inside Nintendo. So mm-hmm. a lot of times I feel like the leaks come once it's localized. Mm-hmm. So someone at Nintendo of America, someone at Nintendo of Europe, you know, decides to tell their buddies or tell someone and then it just kinda goes around and we find out things. Oh, um, Reggie. And <laughs> it's also partially why I hope the game comes out in March because I think if it, it if it makes it past another E3, for starters, it won't be as impressive at a second E3 as it was at, was at this past one. Like they, they can't do it better than that. So it almost feels redundant to be at another E3. Uh, unless for some reason it's just that much more visually impressive, which we don't know yet. We scrapped the entire game between E3 2016 and now it's a completely <laughs> new game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't know what they could really do to, to show off this big game again. And they should have, with the Switch out, they should have so many other games to talk about at E3. Um, that Zelda really shouldn't be the focus. And I feel like if it gets <clears throat> delayed to summer, then it starts to become a focus again. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I almost feel like it needs to hit March just based on how heavily they hit on it this year. But we'll see. I mean, even if localization isn't done, doesn't mean, and I noted this in the news post, it doesn't mean they haven't been quality testing it in Japan this whole time. Um, it just well, it means... if we got a Japanese, like if it got region-specific um, sent out, as, oh. as opposed to like a uh, region-free release. So we saw it in Japan like three months earlier than we saw it in, we see it in America. And, and that's the thing, like that can happen. Um, Nintendo's done it before. They have they haven't done it with Zelda in a while. I'm trying to remember the last Zelda game they did that with. There was one that released in Japan like three months before. Was it, it Triforce Heroes? Uh, no, I think that was Global. That might have been a week before, maybe in Japan. Then it might be a link between worlds because I remember one of the handhelds was was. Yeah, the, there was some game that came out in Japan before it came out in the United States, and a lot of that's localization recently. Like the game's done, it's just not localized. Yeah. Um. So they're like, oh, why delay in Japan? The game's already done. Let's just release it. Well, the reason is because then everyone gets spoilers before they get a chance to play. Mm -hmm. Um, Or they're tempted to download the Japanese ROM and and play the game. Uh, But, again, Breath of the Wild is going to probably be a worldwide release. It's too big. Yeah. Too big. And, again, that could also lead credence to why it might not come out in March. Because it is so big, they want to make sure it's fully (laughs) localized. With no bugs. Um, oh. Except the ones you catch. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I don't want these rumors to be true, but then I do want them to be true just because it includes the difficulty thing and because it includes the first thing that we've actually heard about how this game runs on the Switch in terms of it apparently runs better and smoother. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people assume that, but we weren't ever really sure because all we were told by Nintendo is there will be visual enhancements. Yeah. Without any idea what that means. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, and and speaking of the Switch, um, we have a second rumor about the Switch. Oh, well, a second rumor, and then this second rumor is about the Switch. <laughs> There's many other rumors about the Switch. All tons of um, rumors. And this one comes from Laura Kate Dale of Let's Play Video Games, um, who was right at this. I'm going to read parts of your article again, I think. Is this yours? Uh, that might have been Darren, if you're reading on Darren, Zelda yep. I wrote the one on um, Nintendo Prime. So. <clears throat> yep. So, um, well, we've learned some info beforehand, and this is kind of stuff we already figured. Um, not maybe necessarily down to the price point she gives, plus this is UK. Um, so keep in mind that these aren't going to be direct, like... One to one American dollars or USD to UK. Um, um, but she said. Darren actually screwed that, up his report a little bit now that I'm looking at it, but go on. I'll correct you when he well, orders screw up, sorry. Okay. Um, the report says, Darren's report says today this, uh, she states the system will be sold by UK retailer game for 199.99 euros. I guess what that is. Um, and. Two forty nine ninety nine euros. I'm gonna look up if that is euros or if that's the pound. Remember, there's that whole Brexit thing that just happened. Yeah, I so. know. That's that's why I'm just made. It, that's, nope, that's the, that's the British pound. 
<clears throat> okay, so 199.99 pounds, and then 249.99 pounds. Um, and she believes that there are two SKUs with this, which would make sense, um, with the 249.99 model boasting more internal storage and a bundled game, which, you know, we can assume that it might be Breath of the Wild, we can assume it might be the new Mario game, but all she says is that the rumor states that it's going to be a bundled game with more internal storage, which sounds a lot like what they did with the Wii U, because you have the 32 gigabyte model with the Wii U and then the 64 gigabyte um, with the white and black models uh, with two separate price points. So it's nothing new, it's nothing we haven't you know, seen Nintendo do before. Um, so it's, there's no reason to discredit this immediately, but again, this is just a rumor. Yep. Um, and it's important to note that, yeah, like it's important to note with Laura Kate Dale too. Unlike Emily Rogers, she has a very long history of getting things right. Mm-hmm. Um, she's only getting a lot of attention now because of her uh, Nintendo Switch stuff and because she doesn't really have a massive Twitter following. But she's worked at Destructoid. She's worked at Kotaku. She's worked at a lot of big publications. Now she works at Let's Play Video Games. Um, and she's gathered these sources over the years and learned very, like like really specific ways to vet her sources uh, like, she knew about the pricing and all this other stuff um, before, but she only had one source for it. And she's one of those people that does not believe anything is report-worthy if there's only one source. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a very good policy to keep. It's something you would learn by working at big publications. That one source, unless that source is the source, like, <laughs> if it's Reggie, um, <laughs> is not going to be good enough. Uh, you need multiple sources to verify so she ended up getting a second source that she was able to verify uh, through her vetting process. And she's, a, she's a, unlike Emily Rogers, who has never really been forthcoming with where, where her sources are from, who they are, Laura K. Dale's been very forthcoming about uh, these are like the areas where my sources come from, which a lot of people don't do because that, that could get sources in trouble. But uh, apparently none of her sources are getting in trouble. Like she said, I have a source inside Nintendo. That's the only hint she gave. That could be anywhere inside Nintendo. You assume, you know, and yeah. she's in Europe, so what? someone inside Nintendo of America, inside Nintendo of Europe, someone inside Nintendo of Japan, you don't really know. Um, but she actually, like, explains where all her sources come from. So compared to Emily Rogers, she is a lot more, uh, a, a longer history of reliability. Um, and so I, I'm kind of tending to believe what she has to say here. And what makes this story really interesting is actually the update on it. Um, Game UK contacted her almost immediately after the story went up, uh, one, denying the story, which, okay. And then, two, basically telling her that she's spreading false information. Here's their general generalized policy where, where right now they list the, the console for 999 pounds. They just list all things they don't know final prices for is that. And then they... Uh, went on to, like, if you don't remove, like, the, uh, the guy said something about her journalistic integrity is, like, going to be permanently damaged. And that if she doesn't take the article down, they're going to take further action. Which, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't do that or say that. Like, why are you so angry about it? And then, apparently, someone above this guy uh, ended up emailing her four minutes later apologizing for the rudeness of the prior email, still denying the report, uh, requesting that she uh, edited the report and put in like an official response from, from them uh, about it not being true or deleting the report. And they did not say there would be any further action because, of course, there's not going to be any further legal action. Yeah, It's a rumor. There is no legal action to, to have. Uh, if, there, if, there's a, if there's like a leak that got out from your company... You need to figure out where the leak came from. You don't threaten the person who reported it. Uh, so it, it, it was just really, really weird. Uh, and the fact that they were so quick to like respond to her uh, and and try to discredit her almost tells you that she knows something she's not supposed to know. Yeah, it, that kind of it's like whenever you're quickly silenced, that means that you're either right or you're really, really close. To yeah, and so I. You know, and she does note that this price point for these two SKUs, because obviously the biggest news that come out of this is that there's two SKUs. You know, it, it's that there is 
a bundle. Like there's a, the standard version, and then there's like a premium model, which we, we've had rumors about this before. Uh, but what we didn't know about those rumors is that supposedly this premium bundle has more storage in it. That that's a new part. We we didn't know that there was going to be uh, like the Wii U, where there'd be you know eight gigabyte and then a, a was it thirty two. Uh, that was not ever rumored for the Switch. It was always thirty two, and that's just what it's going to be. Um, so now is I hate it, that that's their baseline. Yeah, well, if that is if that store. is their baseline, I. I hope I, know. I, I hope that's not. Some people are like, "Oh, well, maybe the premium will be sixty four and I'm like, "That's still not enough." Yeah. If they're not going at least five hundred, it, it's not enough. Well, like I, I wanted to, uh, for example, I was I was looking at buying Dishonored two for my PC. It's a sixty gigabyte game. If that came to the Switch at a sixty four gigabyte internal storage, that's that's the end of that internal storage. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the. I mean. I, I get the concept of it being built around physical media. Like, I get mm-hmm. that. I think it's a brilliant concept. I think it does, you know, you don't have to install games. So, in theory, you shouldn't fill your system as fast as you do, like, an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. But that's got nothing to do with digital buyers. Digital buyers always use storage. That's the whole point of buying digitally. Um, and even if you can keep your game saves and delete games and download other games, which I'm assuming they're going to let you do because you can already do that with the Wii U, it, it's still not the same. It's still a waste of time for a person to have to keep re-downloading the game they already own. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, you know, they, they've talked about maybe there's a SD card behind the kickstand that you can put in um, to expand the storage to whatever they let you expand it to. Uh, you know, that, and that's one reason I always hated the rumor that there is no external hard drive support that is weird like i make it makes sense because it's portable obviously you're not going to plug in an external hard drive into your portable machine when you're on the go but when you're at home it makes a lot of sense to me to, to have it as an option mm-hmm. at home even if you can't take those games with you when you go you know you can install whatever game you want on your internal and take that with you like at least have the option at home but we'll see we'll see but it did this whole thing just it screams that laura obviously got a hold of some information that she was not supposed to have <laughs> she put it out there because companies don't respond to this. I mean, as an example, uh, this is the second time we've heard of the two forty nine ninety nine price point. We just like a few days ago, there was a Canadian retailer that accidentally had it listed online at two hundred two hundred and thirty something Canadian dollars, which uh, I, or it, it was some price point that equated to two hundred and fifty dollars USD. So. They accidentally put that out there, and then mere hours later, they changed it back to whatever placeholder they normally use. And it was kind of like a whoops, it happened. They didn't go out and threaten people about it. Um, and granted, you can't because it was your own mistake. So this is a little different. But still, it's kind of like, what What are you going to threaten her with? False reporting? You, are you going to go on go into your your local store, your, your like game stores in the UK, and just start putting up signs that says, Laura Kate Dale's a fraud? Like, you, you, you can't do... She got a hold of information. She's either lying or it's legit. And... Or she... Or the information... Or the information could be wrong, too. And, and that's totally... Like, obviously, the information can be wrong. She has a track record of being right and being really good about vetting. So I, I doubt that it's 100% incorrect. Yeah. But even if it is wrong, why say anything at all about it? Her... If she is doing bad reporting and if you are are questioning her journalistic integrity, that'll blow up on itself on January 12th. Like, that's the same thing with Emily Rogers. Like, there's no reason to go attack her because we'll know on January 12th if all this stuff is true. Hopefully. hopefully. Well, they said they're going to announce price. So we already Mm -hmm. already know for sure. Um, I don't know if they'll announce multiple SKUs. I'm assuming they Mm -hmm. would. That's so close to launch. Like, they have to. But um, we'll, we will know the price. So, like, game doesn't have to say anything if this isn't true. Because they're not the ones reporting it. So they have nothing to lose. But now they look like crap because they went off and attacked a media <laughs> member for reporting on something that they clearly do not want to be have reported on. Um, and, and I think a lot of it's they're trying to cover their butt. Because if this yeah. is true... Like, they let out information they should... Yeah, like, like if this like, is true... That means that Nintendo already told retailers... Because basically, 
Well, what this is, is this price is not the suggested retail price from Nintendo. She does note this, that mm-hmm. this is not Nintendo's set suggested retail price. What this is based upon is what Game UK has been told the unit is going to cost to have it in their stores. So basically, the unit itself is going to cost about somewhere between like one ninety nine from Nintendo. Like so, when you buy that system in the store, one hundred ninety nine pounds of that goes right back to Nintendo, who uses it for the manufacturing, the shipping, all that stuff. The rest of the money will get split up between the retailer cost and the shipping, the packaging, retail space, etc. But essentially, um, they're marking it up what you normally would mark up something at that price. Uh, so this would be probably around what the suggested retail price would be. Uh, so that means that the bigger news coming out of it is that the apparent cost of the system to the retailer got out, and that never gets out. <laughs> so like, if that's true, I could see why they're really, really mad, because that would be information that they could be privy to. You know, They might not know the suggested mm-hmm. retail price, but they are probably going to know what the system costs to their company because they're already probably getting orders in for it for launch. So it's it's a very sticky situation that makes me really, really believe that Laura K. Dale is on top of her stuff here. Um, and she refu- absolutely refuses to take down the report. It's not going to happen. There's no legal ramifications for her having this report up. Either her reputation gets wrecked or she just keeps getting proven correct like she's been proven correct throughout her whole career. Um, so yeah, I mean, th- thanks for sharing all this. I mean, I appreciate people like Laura Kate Dale, uh, even Emily Rogers to an effect who kind of put themselves out there and like, look, we have this information. Let's share it with people. Um, Nintendo switch, baby. See you on January 12th. <laughs> That's when all this drama can end. <laughs> Ho- it's not hopefully it will all be right. there. The switch is going to be there on January 12th. Do you think an apocalypse is coming or something? <laughs> no, they're going to be like. Stay tuned for more information on uh, Mark. <laughs> January 12th hits. The timer counts down. Hey, welcome to Nintendo Live. And did you hear about Pokemon Sun and Moon? Isn't that great? We'll see you on March 3rd. Hasn't it been great? You like it? <laughs> <laughs> yep. The Switch. We're porting Paper Mario Color Splash to the 3D. Yeah, the Switch isn't ready. <laughs> oh, boy. So what do we have to talk about next? I can only hope not. Yeah. Fantopics. I love fan topics. So we got a few fan topics from the Facebook, the, the Facebook. that the kids the kids use nowadays. <laughs> um, so we'll just go into those. The first one's from Connor Ooh. Gilly. It says, do you think Nintendo should ever flesh out Link's mother? All she has going for her was when she was mentioned in Ocarina of Time. And I would say no. I would say it depends on the game. The game, yeah. I would say, unless we're specifically talking about Ocarina of Time... I don't think so, unless the mother had, like, some greater impact. Yeah, like, in Ocarina of Time, on obviously, of she game. had a big impact. That's why that's why Link was yeah. where he was. So, it's not that you'd ever get a game that's going to flesh it out. I mean, you could get a, a, a manga that does. But I, I, I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, when me and Laura talked about side games, that's kind of a good example where you could have a side game that is, like, right before the start of Ocarina of Time that explains mm-hmm. how Link got to where he is. I think that'd be more of a, a general, like, this is all about Hyrule before Ganondorf type of thing. Um, instead of, oh, this is a game about Link's mom. Well, like, like mom. we know the, we know why he was put there, because there was, like, that war. There was a war going yeah, on. because of the war. But, like, having yeah. a side game take place during that war that leads to Link ultimately being where he is, like, I, I think that would just be a really cool game to have that's never going to happen in, as a mainline game. Like, it's... <laughs> Uh, Hyrule Warriors yeah. 2 might explore it for all we know. It has a better chance of doing it than uh, than uh, a mainline Zelda game does. But there's other situations I've always wondered. Like in The Wind Waker, you live with your grandma. What happened to mom? What happened to dad? We're, we're, we're never really. Well, <laughs> like we're never really told. <laughs> they, they just kind of gloss over the fact that they're not around. Um, well, just, even in Link to the Past, you're yeah. with your uncle. So, like. They have no problem using your grandma, your uncle, your sister, uh, you know, pretty much you, you mentioning that you have a mom, like an Ocarina of Time. Like, they have no problem using these family members, but it is weird. Or even in, 
Or even in Skyward Sword, the fact that you don't have any parents living on the only island that's thought to have humans. But everyone else does. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like everybody else has parents and family except for you. And so no explanation for what happened to your parents. Um, and, and I nope. think... Uh, I would like to see them explore it a little more in, in some instances. Uh, and it doesn't need to be a lot... Uh, you know, as an example, like when we learned that the hero shade uh, is, you know, Link from Ocarina of Time, and that we learned in Hyrule Historia that Link and Twilight Princess is a blood relative of of the hero of time. It's like, okay, so somewhere in there, either the hero of time is your dad, or whatever kid he had was one of your, either your mom or dad. And he had, he obviously found someone. Yeah. So, like, there's suggested connections and parenting. I I think if there's going to be parents in a game, it's obviously not going to be Breath of the Wild because you've been asleep for 100 years. So, any parents you might have had are dead. It's just, unless they weren't, maybe they're asleep in some chamber somewhere. I guess I shouldn't get ahead of myself. We have no idea what's happening in Breath of the Wild. Uh, Yeah. Very unlikely. Very unlikely. Um, I think there could be a game, and, and I've always thought this, that. The, with the way they've been sprinkling family members in, it almost feels like we're almost building up to a point where there's going to be a game that's based heavily around Link's family. Um, instead of being, go save, you know, go, you know, we've already had the go save your sister thing. You know, go save your parents. Learn about your past through your family. Um, Maybe that's what happens in Breath of the Wild. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's entirely possible. You know, they, they keep saying you're going to go learn about your past. Maybe there's flashbacks. Maybe there's things you end up going through and you do, you know, we do finally see, you know, more of his extended family. It's just the game yeah. constantly references that basically Link has a family or had a family. Had, but yeah. we don't really learn about it. And it's always been really weird to me because of all the characters in the Zeldaverse, Link is the one that feels most disconnected from the actual world. Like he doesn't belong there. Um. Almost like he's an out of time character placed into each yeah, individual. Yeah, it's really, really weird. Um, and we know because the Hyrule story, thankfully, the Hyrule story did connect a lot of dots. But it's still in the games themselves. It just it feels like they really should explore like his mother or his dad sometime. Like even if they aren't super important people, it's okay. They don't have to be important. Uh, because you know Link is destined. He, he's blessed. He's always supposed to come around. Uh, so it, it's kind of one of those, uh, it doesn't really matter if the parents are that important, but it's, it's important to know why Link is who he is. Like as Link is starting to get more and more personality in each game, it's good to know who instilled that personality in them. Um, mm-hmm. and you would assume that's, you know, people who raised him, you know, like his uncle and Link to the past or, you know, his actual parents, like what, what did they do to make Link who he is? Um, and I think the problem with that, um, with us not being able to know as parents, is that if you really think about it, um, aside from maybe Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, there hasn't been a lot of, like, human life in the games, or, like, sure. Hylian life. Like, they're localized cities. in, like, you know, Ocarina of... Yeah, in the cities, like, in Ocarina of Time, you've got Kakariko Village, and, um, Hyrule yeah. Town. It's possible his mother could have been a Gerudo, too. Like... They're close enough to Hylians that you wouldn't necessarily know. Yeah, but like there's there's never been like a, you know, an overwhelming abundance of, yeah. of people and, and thriving. Although Twilight Princess games. had an awful lot of them, you just couldn't talk to them. <laughs> yeah, Twilight Princess had yeah. They they're just, fodder. They're you know, they're background characters. Fodder, but. <clears throat> and so you had all these like you don't have a lot of like. Hylian or humanoid, like you have humanoid characters, you don't have a lot of human characters. And so, I think that it's, again, like, you know, Nintendo doesn't really focus on story except for this game, which has a big emphasis on story along with yeah. gameplay and everything else. Um, but they, I think aside from Majora's Mask, we haven't seen a game, a Legend of Zelda game focused on sure. characters. Sure, I can agree with that. Like, Majora's Mask was really, really focused on the characters, who yeah. they were, what their story was. How this event focused them, uh, um, affected them, and you know we have we we can't see that in other games because a lot of them don't have like huge areas 
of of population and story you see uh well well, that's what excites me about breath of the wild actually is the potential that side quests could have like the reason we didn't see the towns is because they contain story and the story Mm. are probably partially through the optional side quests and it's like that's awesome because it hasn't been that way since majora's mask Really, I mean, there was some stuff in The Wind Waker. I will give The Wind Waker credit. It did a pretty solid job with, with story. Kind of, yeah. Um, but n- nothing's been like Majora's Mask. So if like the, all the towns, or all the mini towns are like mini clock towns where you get to know the people and get through the know the people and doing all the various side quests, you get to know a bit about yourself. Like, that's awesome. That's what I want because mm-hmm. uh, that makes all the characters mm-hmm. matter. And, and I think in terms of Link's parents or like his mother, a, as the person brought up, um, they don't have to be in the game. Like, I'm, I'm okay if they're not in the game. I'm okay if they are in the game. But, like, even just some subtleties to it. Like, obviously, this Link in Breath of the Wild doesn't have a home right now. But in other games, like in Skyward Sword, why doesn't he have a picture of his parents in his room? You know, just yeah. the little things like that that show he came from somewhere. Um, I, I think are really important and have always actually been missing... In re- uh, well, not always. Obviously, in Ocarina of Time, we, we do learn where he came from. But I mean, for the yeah. most for yeah, the most part, like you know, and now thanks to Hyrule Story, we now know kind of sort of where Link came from. But it, it, it's still it, it's always been like an empty plot hole in the series, and they keep running with it. Where we don't really need to explain where the heck Link comes from. But we'll explain to everybody else. Link is just he's supposed to be there. He's Link. It's like yep. But, but he came from somewhere, right? He was a kid. <laughs> he Someone raised him. I mean... <laughs> but, yeah, so... I would love to see them do more with it. I, I don't think they're going to. Breath of the Wild... Well, Breath of the Wild gives them the obvious excuse to not do it. He's been asleep for 100 years. Uh, yeah. But... And who knows? You know, We don't know. That, that could be a prior link from a different game as is. Uh, so there might be not any reason to explain it. But it, I don't know. I... I want them to do more. I don't think they're good enough at storytelling, apparently, to even put a picture of his parents in his room. I don't think they even think about these kind of things. Um, That would just make it a much more deeper and connected world if they could just... And, like, even have a side character be like, oh, I remember when your mother did this. Like, like, it's such a subtle thing that really makes no difference except for making the world more believable that you live in. Um. And I hope they do subtle things like that in, in Breath of the Wild. You know, I don't know if characters will recognize Link, but if they recognize, um, you know, things that happened in the past that you remember as a player from prior games. Um, like, just little yeah. subtle things like that really make the world feel connected. And you got... Yeah, and Wind, Wind Waker, Waker. It, was, it was brilliant doing that. Like, Link felt connected to the world. Even though you didn't know the parents, the grandmother was connected. You clearly knew that was your grandmother. You clearly knew that was your sister. Um, everything. Mm-hmm. She had the shield, and she had the the outfit, and um, even Ganondorf, you know, referenced the hero, and it was in the in the uh, introduction to the game. Like it was very like, even the the uh, great Deku tree, um, said you know you remind me of you know a time forgotten type of thing. Yeah, it, it um, was all subtle so subtle stuff. They know how to, that they just don't yeah. they don't seem to do that a lot. Um, but again, more sto- a more story focused game can allow them to do that. Breath of the Wild, as mm-hmm. open as the exploration is and as optional as the story is, it's okay for all of it to be optional stuff as long as it's there. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm really hoping they do explore it. Obviously, the mother is, is a big point, especially for Ocarina of Time. Uh, but I- any of his yeah. parents or anyone that raised him, it, it would just be good to have subtle hints to how you became who you are. Um, because really, we never get that. Like, Skyward Sword, that was probably the big thing that disappointed me, was was the literal lack of understanding of why Link is who he is and where, where he, he came from. from. All we know is, he wakes up, he's trying to become part of the Sky Riding group, and he likes Zelda. And he gets bullied by the bullies. But we have no background to why he's bullied by the bullies. We have no background to why he's trying to join the Knight Academy. We just, he's Link, so of course he's trying to join up. No, why? What growing up made him want to be part of the Night Academy? Uh, we have no explanation for who's been who raised him. You know, where were his parents? Where are any family members? Of Everyone else has family. Zelda has family. Where's Link's family? 
Uh, it, it just it, it it's really odd, and that was my really one of my maybe two complaints I have about Sky Resort is that beginning part. Um, but anyways, I I think we did a pretty good job talking about possibilities there. Yeah. Good yeah. Co- good question. And then speaking speaking of another possibility, Robert Ruiz asks uh, about the possibility of Breath of the Wild having a huge but empty world, and this is kind of a quick response um, because this is kind of a quick question, uh, but my gut instinct is to say it, it like just instantly when I hear open world Zelda game I think, no, it's not going to happen but we've seen and we've heard that they're trying to make this a living, um, vibrant open world so we have no reason to doubt that it's going to be just that I doubt it'll be empty um, it's definitely going to have stuff to do like we've already seen that they're going to have different uh, Bokoblin encampments and um, different enemies to fight in the field um, we've heard that there's going to be towns and villages and all these things for you to find and I don't think it's going to be empty this is something that they probably like they took the criticism from Skyward Sword and from Wind Waker and they were like well there's a lot of empty space around here let's fill it with stuff and so this game thrives on having this open air um, environment where everything's alive and everything's um, usable and the environment is at your disposal type of thing. So I don't think it's going to be empty at all. I th- um, yeah, don't think that see... It's, it's a reasonable it fear, but uh, it, we've been proven that it's not... Like, not proven, but we've been told time and time uh, again that See, that's to me it kind of depends. What's your definition of empty? If, if you watched all that E3 footage... And you came away with the opinion that the world looks empty, then yes, it's going to be empty to you. That that is what the game is. Uh, but the thing is, to build a big believable world, you can't have stuff every ten like every ten steps you take. It's impossible. There could be stuff to interact with, whether it's grass or trees, or you know bugs or whatever. But reality is that it, if you step outside, it's not exciting every five feet you go it's just the way it is and the world isn't believable if that's the case uh if you want a world that's like that then majora's mask is really your cup of tea uh or you know games that have a lot Mm -hmm. smaller more condensed worlds heck i can even argue skyward sword i know you brought it up as an example of like learning from that but really the entire thing is a dungeon and a puzzle every area you go to so there's always something to do well i meant more along the lines of of yeah the sky yeah the sky the sky was pretty boring yeah that it was yeah, just so that was, that's my that's actually really my other complaint about really Skyward this guy, but um, yeah, it's it's one of those where I like the amount of so-called empty space they had in the demo because uh, it really added uh, added a beauty to the world, added a believability to the world, and it's not like you ever went so far that you felt like there's nothing to do. Um, you knew that you know. Maybe not every ten feet, but you know, fifty feet down the way, there's a there's a camp of of, of Bokoblins. Or you might be in an area that looks completely empty, and then suddenly Step Talus pops out of the ground. Uh, there's you know various uh, what is it? There there's hunting and gathering and all this different stuff you can do. Um, yes, the world's gonna appear empty at times. Like when you saw uh, the one guy fighting the uh, fighting the guardian out in the field during the one footage where he jumped off the, the horse and shot him and, and defeated him, the Nintendo Treehouse people. Mm-hmm. It's apparently pre-recorded footage, but whatever. Uh, yeah, they were fighting in a wide open area that was pretty empty. Like, they were in a field, and there was nothing going on. It was grass and this battle. And obviously that battle felt epic. But when that battle's not going on, yeah, that's a giant open area of nothingness, besides a bunch of grass you can burn or, or cut down. And... I don't think that's a problem because that's the way the world is. There's fields, there's forests, there's rivers, there's all this stuff. There's mountains, and they don't have to. the The thrill of exploration should is kind of what this game's calling for. Like Breath of the Wild, they want you to feel like you are out in nature exploring, and that's part of nature is just taking in the beauty of it, not necessarily always having something to physically do. Yeah, and like, and like Nate said, you kind of have to define empty in that in that aspect because the difference between, um, like, in, in my idea of an empty world or an empty open world in terms of, uh, 
like where you travel and get from destination to destination is the sky and skyward sword because even if it didn't have um islands and like an island every five seconds with something to do there were still other ways that it could be made better i think um man i think it was barry from uh game grumps i might be wrong um he did a video on how to fix skyward Ooh, sword yep. sky. yeah i remember that um yeah and so it talked about things like there being no cloud layer like you could see the ground beneath you um, and you could look up into the sky and see individual, like, all the floating yeah. islands and stuff. And Yeah, you know, it, w- it would add to the believability of it. And, and, yeah. Yeah. And so that's kind of what you have to look at. Like like Nate said, you don't step outside and into nature and everything's happening all at once. You know, you have, you have to go from one place to another and then there's different things that are, are occurring. Even in games like Skyrim, um, that's, that's my go-to example because that's the one I play most recently. Uh, you walk outside, you go to a river, there may be enemies nearby, there may not. You could walk a long trek without fighting anyone at all. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not a, a vibrant world, that just means that it's it's natural. Um, it's a natural place to, to move about, and you know, there's well, rivers, there's rocks. And, and there's, I liken it to, there's a lot um, of people um, that have been replaying Red Dead Redemption lately. Because, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 just got announced for, for a release next year. And... Mm-hmm. The reason that some people don't just go ahead and destroy that game in, like, under eight hours is because they're just taking in the environment. It's beautiful to them. Mm. It, it, it tells a story. Um, you know, even if you think to the Breath of the Wild demo, uh, there's large swaths of area there that looks like a ruined castle town. That tells a story. There's nothing going on. You're just exploring what oh, the, all these ruins. And so, I mean, you do eventually run to a guardian and a shrine. Uh, but again, that's also an example of there is going to be something to do. It's not like you're going to be just out here running around for so long you'll never find anything to do. That's not the case. But um, it's that thrill of exploration I think they really want to get across. And there's things that can excite you about that exploration that are not necessarily enemy encounters. You know, that that's why I kind of feel... What do you mean by empty? If if you see if you what you saw from E three looked empty to you, then it's most definitely always going to be empty to you. But I, that's not the feeling I got playing the yeah. game. I got the feeling that this is a vast world with a lot of things to discover. Uh, look at the hundreds and thousands of theories that have popped up since E three, just based on exploring the world. Like that's amazing. Um, the amount of detail that's in the world and the, the fact that the world feels alive, I think really, really helps that. Like there are times in Skyrim, like the original Skyrim, not any modification version, um, where it does feel a little dead Mm -hmm. because for some reason you'll be in large spots of area where like nature seems to not exist for some reason. It's weird. I I don't, I don't know. It's almost like they just forgot to fully develop that, that area or something. Uh, but yeah, Bethesda does it sometimes. Game. I mean, they're not so much with the Dishonored game, um, which is why. Uh, it, well, Dishonored's not. Really yeah, open it's world it's more like a level based open world system. It's it yeah it, it's with it's a, a different world. kind of game, but it, it's just kind of. Mm-hmm. I never got that feeling with Breath of the Wild. It always felt alive. Like even if there's nothing to do, I saw some butterflies in the distance. I saw a frog jump past my feet. I see a deer running off, like. This world feels alive. And that's a large part of making me feel like I'm part of something. Um, isn't just having things to literally do gameplay-wise. It's enjoying the world that you're in. Um, and I think this game, more than any other Zelda game ever, is trying to convey that. And if you know, you, you can't hearken this back to Zelda 1 where every screen you went on, there was something to fight. Yeah, also, exactly. That's a 2D top down. And if you think about like what what you're basically describing then if you want an enemy on every screen is you want Breath well, High of the Wild Warriors. to look yeah. like High Warriors. Yeah. Just Warriors. non-stop fighting, which which yeah. is fine. It's, it's cool to like those kind of games. But this no, isn't really like a hack and slash type of game. And and if this Even if you look at the original game, Zelda game, but it's, look it's at not. the art piece that they keep referencing because uh, there's like a shot that looks like it in Breath of the Wild, where Link is standing on a cliff overlooking this vast land with mountains in the background, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And that was there since Zelda 1 as an official art piece. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. The fact that I finally, at 30 years old, 
hopefully 30, hopefully it comes out before my 31st birthday, um, will get to realize that in a Zelda game is amazing to me. Like, it feels like they always wanted Zelda to be like that. It just, the technology wasn't there. Or they lacked the imagination to pull it off. Like, they wanted Skyward Sword to be open world. It just wasn't working out. Um, now it's working out. And, and as, as uh, I, I think referencing <clears throat> something earlier from... Uh, Emily Rogers, where she quoted one of her sources that said, you know, the game is ambitious, almost too ambitious. To do what they're doing requires a lot of ambition. Regardless of if her sources are right. It requires a lot of ambition. And that's what I like seeing about this game. And as much as I might hate on Ocarina of Time, I don't actually hate the game. I know I've literally said I hate it, but I don't. Um, I I just strongly (laughs) feel that it is massively overrated. Reality is that Ocarina of Time did feel like a game where they had a lot of imagination uh, in terms of pushing this series to go someplace. And it does feel like we've kind of had a lack of imagination and a lack of, uh, of ambition until Breath of the Wild. So I think this world is exactly what it, what it needs to be. So... Long story short, again, if you already think it's empty, then it's gonna always be empty to you. Yeah. But I think it's I think it's perfect and beautiful, and everything I want. Anyways, I mean, I know I just got to play the demo area. I don't know if the rest of the game is gonna be that way. Um, the trailer gives me hope it's going to be because they show off a few areas, but uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Hopefully in March. <laughs> Hopefully, cross my fingers. Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so there were some more fan topics, but I have something else I want us to get to, so we might hit on those sure. in a later podcast. You're going to start keeping we'll track of them like I but started to do I... before I lost the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, no. yeah maybe I'll just jack them for that podcast. No, I won't take it. We'll get our own fan topics for that podcast. <laughs> 